Hello and welcome to Rotary and serving our community. My name is Wade Nomura and with us today we have a very special guest, Paul Netzo, who is going to be the incoming chair of the Rotary Foundation. Paul, welcome. Oh, thank you very much, Wade. And thanks for joining us, by the way. I'm delighted to be here. I know with your busy schedule, uh, we had to squeeze you in here, but we sure appreciate you that. You bet. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your, your personal background, your professional background. Yeah, okay. Uh, I started, uh, actually I was born and raised in the Seattle-Tacoma area, state of Washington, and uh, a place called Browns Point, uh, right on Puget Sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, was uh, there until high school. We moved to uh, Yakima, Washington, which was in the central part of the state of Washington, where I graduated from high school there, and then went to uh, college in uh, Chicago on the south side, Hyde Park, actually wow. near the University of Chicago. Uh, I uh, studied a, in a program that was one of the only uh, schools in the country at that time that was uh, training professionals to go into nonprofit management and nonprofit work. And that's where I met my wife, Diane, as a matter of fact. She was from Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, and went to school there also, obviously. And, and as it turned out, we got married in our last uh, quarter oh, yeah. in school, and that's then uh, eventually came to Los Angeles and um, after uh, graduating. And for the most part, we've stayed in Los Angeles all, all that time since. And uh, Great. Yeah. So what... what um Drew you to Los Angeles after graduating there? Uh, went to work with the YMCA of oh. Metropolitan Los Angeles. It's okay. in the top five largest YMCA's in the world. It was back then and still is today. Wow. And, and so it was a remarkable uh, experience working with uh, young people and uh, people of all ages, of course. But uh, my particular interest was in, uh, in the youth work at that time. And uh, so that was where I spent about 22 years. Wow. And you um, dabbled a little bit in politics from what I recall. Well, I did, as a matter of fact, <laughs> yes. And um, uh, actually, it's sort of a, a, a little bit of a, a longer story in terms of how I got into it. Um, I was executive director uh, of the uh, Culver City YMCA, okay. uh, called the Culver Palms YMCA, and uh, for a number of years. And then I uh, went to, uh, for about five, six years after we moved to Los Angeles. and. Um, and then uh, I was transferred uh, to the downtown uh, metropolitan operation. Uh, eventually I became executive vice president where I oversaw all of the fundraising and fund development activities of the, uh, of the association. And uh, while, we were, uh, while I was there uh, uh, in that position, it was easier for me to be involved in uh, some political activities and so forth. So I uh, was invited to serve as, uh, uh, to be a candidate for the Board of Education and uh, during the, the latter half of the 70s, and I was elected and, and served a, a full term on the Board of Education, serving as its president uh, one, uh, one term. And, uh, and uh, as I was looking at uh, reading up, if you will, for, uh, for a second term, uh, people came and suggested, well, maybe you ought to consider uh, being a candidate for the city council. So uh, I thought it over, and my wife and I, we, we decided that would be a, a great opportunity. And, and so uh, I did uh, run as a, a candidate and was elected and uh, wound up serving two terms as mayor of the city during the time that I was okay. uh, serving on the, on the city council. And so uh, my life is uh, one of the underbellies of my, my particular uh, adult life has been service. I've, I've had a great deal of belief that, um, that we have an obligation as citizens to return to our community and to organizations or whatever we can through, through serving. And I thought, uh, it, it, I have no interest in a long-term political career, but I feel, well, if I can offer and contribute something to the city and to the community, uh, I would do that. So that was one of the areas that I did spend a, a number of, about 12 years in that those roles. That's great. Sounds yeah. like a lifelong destination for you. Well, so, it was uh, certainly a, uh, it was <laughs> a, it was a magnificent. It was right. I was in the process actually of thinking of going into a master's program at the time that I was originally uh, asked to consider running for the board of education. Mm -hmm. And so, as it turned out, my master's <laughs> turned out to be public service and <laughs> okay. in an extraordinarily uh, unique uh, situation. And twelve years of that, and uh, and so I figured that that was my master's degree. <laughs> I learned so much from that uh, that, that experience. That is great. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your uh, Rotary experience and how you got into Rotary. Yeah, well, that's an interesting one, too. Um, I, uh, when I was 26 years old, I was uh, asked to be the executive director of the, of the Culver City YMCA, Culver Palms YMCA. And uh, within virtually uh, a month and a half of my coming into the position <laughs> on the job, 
the um, Rotary Clubs and or the uh, service clubs in the community uh, contacted me and asked if I'd be willing to consider joining their club. And uh, that's a pretty standard procedure in, in many, many communities, sure. of course. And so I said, sure, I'd, I'd love to have a chance to get acquainted with the different clubs. So I attended about five different uh, organizations uh, meetings. And, uh, and the long and the short of it was Rotary Hands Down was the organization that just stood out to me for a whole variety of reasons, uh, one of which was just simply that they were the movers and shakers. They were the leaders of the community. And a number of them were on the board of uh, directors of the YMCA. And so I had that uh, opportunity also to see them in action in a different uh, circle. So uh, that's, that was my first uh, exposure to, uh, to Rotary. You got it. And which club is that? that, uh, that then it was the Culver City Rotary the Club. Culver City, okay. And about four and a half years, uh, I was going through the chairs and, and uh, very likely would have been president uh, within a year or two right. after. Uh, but I was uh, transferred to the downtown uh, Metropolitan YMCA office, the corporate headquarters okay. of the YMCA. and, and uh, and I uh, immediately was able to join the Rotary Club of Los Angeles. And so I was, uh, have been a member of that ever since. Got it. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about um, your Rotary moment. Have you ever had a Rotary moment, something you could pin back on? Yeah, you know, like yeah, I've had, uh, actually I would, I would say a number of Rotary moments. And, uh, you know, it's a, but uh, there, were, there were two that were most memorable to me. And the first one, believe it or not, was uh, when I sponsored a member. Uh, the first time I'd been in Rotary maybe 10 years uh, and I was in the Rotary Club of Los Angeles at the time obviously and uh, uh, sponsoring a member uh, gave me such pride that I had no idea the, the significance of uh, I felt like I was really contributing to the livelihood of the, to the lifeblood of, of Rotary and, and to our club in particular. But, but another, uh, what I would consider my, from a programmatic standpoint in uh, Rotary experience was uh, going to India and working on a right. polio corrective surgery project right. where we uh, had, um, uh, our district was uh, involved in a Rotary 3H grant then they were called, right. uh, about $250,000 and, and every year we were uh, sending a delegation of, of 10 uh, Rotary leaders, I was the governor at the time for our district, went to uh, uh, Pune, uh, Mumbai and Pune, India, respectively, and we uh, did about 750 surgeries. Wow. And there was a moment in time when, uh, as we were outside of a wooden building that was serving as the medical center for the uh, children that were coming in for the surgery, which, by the way, is about a 20-minute, 20-30-minute 20 uh, surgical procedure on certain tendons in their legs, mm -hmm. and and uh, then following, they put it in a, their legs in a cast, right. and after uh, maybe 45 days, and then rehabilitation and and so forth. Uh, the kids generally were able to run, walk, and be wow. just like normal kids, and it was just a, it was a blessing for them. Anyway, but I had one uh, uh, young boy that I saw come uh, on his hands and knees because he was uh, unable to walk or do anything but right. just crawl. He right. was a crawler, uh, along with uh, his mother and father, obviously, that were right behind him, and he came crawling up to me and, uh, uh, and, and came to the front uh, where my shoe, uh, shoes were and uh, kissed the top of my shoe. Uh, and, and it was just an amazing experience for me. The time just seemed to stop yeah. And, yeah. and chills just went up and down my spine. And, and then the boy crawled back about uh, five or six paces back and the mother came forward and she got down on her hands and knees and she too kissed the top of my shoe. She got up, moved back, the father came forward, did the same thing, wow. and it was an amazing moment. And the Rotarian next to me leaned over and he said, "This is their way of saying thank you for changing their lives and for changing his life forever." And uh, and so I, I asked the uh, Indian uh, Rotarian to let them know that I was so moved by their gesture of appreciation that I said, "I promise you that when I go back." To the United States and, and talk with Rotarians that I will I will tell this story wherever I can because it means a lot so please know that you have done as much for us Rotarians as perhaps we maybe have done for your son and your family. Wow man that is a moving story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would change lives. Yeah. Um, there are, I would say now that you are in the foundation uh, incoming chair of the foundation yes. Was that kind of because of what you just talked about? 
seeing how the foundation works, changes lives, changing lives, things like that. Was that one of the reasons why you, you focused on this specific passion area? Well, it, uh, Rotary opens doors when you, at various levels of when you come into Rotary, and, and, and if not immediately, then somewhere in your journey through Rotary uh, levels of activity. And, and, and I always wanted to reach out and just be involved to do something, and there were many opportunities of leadership opportunities yeah, that I was right. provided and so forth. But a lot of what we did in Rotary, at least in my earlier years in particular, all tended to circle around the Rotary Foundation related activities in one way or another. So it just seemed, uh, just went through a progression. I, I, I went the path of becoming district governor, mm -hmm. which opened up, uh, first of all, I was a past president uh, at that point of right. the Rotary Club of Los Angeles, then a past district governor, and that opens the door to higher levels of uh, sure. exposure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I was uh, eventually elected to serve on the board of directors of Rotary right. International. And, uh, the foundation, being a trustee of the foundation at the time, never was really on the radar screen in my mm -hmm. book. Uh, I figured, you know, well, that's always past presidents and others that, that get right. into that role. But so I served my time, uh, if you will, uh, on the board of directors. And, and immediately following that, then I was asked to start taking on some leadership roles in specific major uh, foundation-related activities. And over a period of three, four years, I wound up then I was uh, elected to the board of trustees of the foundation. and. And so, um, it, to me, it is sort of the heartbeat and the, the center of Rotary's, the world of Rotary activities. Obviously, everything emanates from the Rotar Rotarians individually right, and right. from the clubs. But in terms of uh, the entity that is sort of the catalyst to help provide miracles, uh, particularly through the funding resources and stuff, the foundation is it. So, uh, yeah, it, it was just sort of a love at first sight, but it just sure. kind of uh, materialized in a whole variety of different ways. That is great. It's a good way to explain it, too. The Rotary Foundation, uh, being on the Board of Trustees, is a three-year term. Four-year term, actually. Four-year term. Yes, okay, exactly. four-year term. Uh -huh. That being the longest one um, in the organization as far as for, for volunteers. Do you see um, that as a large benefit? for being able to create the changes that are needed for the foundation? Yeah, I do. Well, not just the changes for the foundation, but to really carry forward issues and priorities that, uh, that, 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 uh, that need to be accomplished. Okay. And, um, and in fact, in my opinion, serving on the board of directors for a two-year term, you really don't get a chance. Uh, one more year would be the ideal, in right. my opinion, on, on the board of directors, mm -hmm. because you, you can be an uh, uh, advocate for a particular issue or priority, and you can work on it, but it takes really two to three years before right. you see it. In the case of the foundation, the four-year term is, is really the optimum, because it takes a year to two years to really begin to learn quite a bit that needs right. to be learned about what it is to be a, a trustee, and, and there are different things that we do as trustees, but the bottom line is it's really in years three and four that you really can begin to uh, advance these things and and certainly I would never have uh, had the opportunity to be the chairman of the trustees if I were only on a, on a couple year term let's right. say and that's in, true. in my opinion yeah probably true uh, as far as membership then how many board of uh, trustees are members on the board? yeah there are 15, 15. And, uh, four of whom are uh, pres past presidents right. uh, typically past the immediate past line of, of mm -hmm. presidents that uh, that serve and the other uh, 11 are uh, ultimately elected in increments of three or, well, generally three a year okay. uh, by the board of directors. And, uh, and the thing that distinguishes the board of directors from the foundation trustees, the board of directors are elected or selected right. by uh, zones from the, right. so that the entire Rotary world is represented right. on the board of directors, whereas uh, many areas of the world do not have what they would consider their quote-unquote representative from okay. uh, on the trustees. However, none of the trustees are representatives of their geographic area. They just right. happen to come from that area, but they're, they, they are they are global in their thinking and working and their decision-making needs to be done truly on a global basis. Having it uh, set up and established that way where they're non-specific to geographical areas, is it an awareness that the trustees have to have as far as looking into different cultures, different areas of the world for yeah. specific needs? Yeah, you know, it really is interesting because uh, I, I've been to probably uh, every continent, first of all, right. short of Antarctica. <laughs> but uh, every place has their own cultural uh, uh, interests and needs and particular uh, issues that they're, they're addressing. And, uh, 
and the trustees do have an opportunity to, to travel to different locations around the world. One of the things is that uh, every trustee attends at least one, if not two, institutes somewhere in the world. Right. And, and part of our job is to go and to speak, to motivate, to, but also to go out into the field and monitor and look at projects and assess them and, and help provide feedback and, and learn from that. And we bring back those experiences and knowledge. Uh, we may have a, re a trustee from Brazil, for instance, right. And, uh, but unless you've been to Brazil and really can understand the culture and the environment and the, and the economic hardships or the political issues that they're addressing there, you, you really, uh, in isolation, if you haven't been there to right. experience that, you really don't have the ability to appreciate it the way it is. Uh, and it's really important because fundraising is a key part of the sure. job of, of trustees and, uh, and, and, the, and the culture and the philosophies of, and, and the protocols of raising funds around the world are quite different in different places around the world from what we might know in North America. You could definitely see that yeah. uh, that happening. Uh, of course, you have uh, a lot of developing countries also that would be, I would say, limited as far as resources financially, but definitely have the. Oh, well, you might be surprised. <laughs> you're, you're you might be surprised. You're, you're as sure. a matter of fact, yeah. yes. Well, that is good. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'll tell you. I just <laughs> happen to know the Philippines. I, I won't yeah, name yeah. names, but yeah. we have a lot of strong leaders in in the uh, Philippines. Sure. Rotary leaders, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I would say that the Arch Clump Society, which is yeah. a very prestigious level of giving at two hundred fifty thousand dollars or more. Right. Uh, I may be mistaken, but I think that we only had maybe two or three uh, what we call AKS members mm -hmm, right. uh, up until uh, about uh, six months ago. Mm -hmm. And just in that last period of time, I think we've had now at least three, maybe four, with more coming into the pipeline. Wow. And, okay. uh, and so it's a... Uh, uh, there, but there are still tremendous economic hardships Correct. throughout the, the country. And, uh, but what, is, what Rotary is able to do and connect, and this is a great illustration of it in my opinion, is that the, 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 the leaders, the people with capacity, may or may not belong to Rotary, but they're connected in the Rotary network or See. vice versa. And, uh, and so Rotarians are able to draw upon, many of them are fellow Rotarians, mm -hmm. And to talk about well, have you ever thought about making a gift in at this in this range that will allow us to do just that much more, whatever the, it might be, and it can be anything across the waterfront in terms of all the opportunities of how the dollars could be used. Understood. Uh, that yeah. does make sense. Uh, I yeah. have noticed in doing uh, international projects myself that there is also uh, oftentimes a substantial distance between yes. those that have and those that need yes. in, in areas like that. Yes. Uh, how, how would you, as a, as a foundation, uh, on the trustees, try to create that um, area where you can assist those that are very low when you have people that have the, the sources or the means in the same country? Well, you know, actually, uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, some might disagree with me, but it's really not the trustees that okay. are driving that. Okay. It, this is grassroots. Okay. The beautiful thing about Rotary, the strength of Rotary is the grassroots nature. Individual Rotarians, Rotary clubs, Rotary districts, multiple d uh, clubs going together to work together on joint projects and so forth. They are the ones on the ground. Uh, and, and, and Rotary has, without a doubt, perhaps the, the most efficient, effective, and powerful network of uh, word of mouth, if you will, and, and connectors, uh, whether it be in the Philippines or in India or Pakistan or Latin America, Africa, you name it, with Rotarians all around the world. That network is powerful and, and active and alive and well. And so uh, constantly new projects are emerging every year, as you, as you know from your experiences. And, uh, and the trustees really try to provide the broad framework and uh, we have what we call the six areas of focus right. and uh, as opposed to 20 areas of focus and the concept of six areas of focus to be broad based but still focused enough in strategic areas of need and issues that, that uh, particularly uh, if they were addressed properly and if every, uh, every human being in the world had their, their housing and their medical care, their education, they, they were literate and, and other kind, and water, clean water and sanitation, access to those things, all of those in their totality, we would have a world almost free of poverty, undoubtedly, and sure. probably a far more, far more peaceful world. Yeah, and and yeah. so, but it isn't the trustees laying on what 
these are the things that need to be done. It's the Rotarians on the ground networking with other Rotarians around the world to say, look, we've got this need, and we work with us on it. Sure, we'll work with you on it, and so we provide both the framework, the point of accountability, stewardship, if you will, of the, the dollars, uh, uh, a mechanism where the dollars can be uh, awarded out for worthy projects and so forth, and, uh, and then we also provide coordination of overall fundraising on a, on a worldwide, but also on a local basis. Right, right. Yeah, we have a network on that. So it, it's a partnership, if you will, is another way to look at that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I see the trustees as part of that organizing effort. So Without a doubt. Bring uh, all this together. It's a major responsibility it, to it have. It is, because yes. I know for a fact when you got, yeah. what, 34,000 clubs yeah. all, of, all wanting to go a separate way. Yeah, exactly. Bringing that together. Precisely. Unity. Yeah, precisely. As far as a trustee and you as the chair, yeah. uh, could you share with us a little bit about how you see the trustees working together? What, what the focus would be and how you identify specific needs, things like that, in the world? Well, uh, we have a lot of committees. Uh, when I say a lot of committees, maybe uh, a half dozen that are specifically targeting particular areas of, of emphasis, if you will, not, not in the context of uh, the areas of focus per se, but issues that need to be uh, attended to. And so the various committees uh, meet and address various issues. Programs committee would be one illustration. The fund development committee is another one. Okay. The investment committee is another one. And, and, and so uh, they are addressing issues that will come to and making recommendations to the trustees. But many of the issues that emerge within the committees come from the grassroots in terms of, of things that are identified as needs or issues that are raised and they say, uh, trustees are to the to Rotary International, right. can you help us on these? So um, it's, it's a combination of uh, the, the management and the administration and oversight of the work that needs to be done, and I mentioned them earlier in, the, right. in what they are, but a lot of them also come up through the grassroots uh, mechanisms. And a lot of what we do uh, centers around training and communication, and so uh, we'll also have uh, groups that work on the training designs and, um, setting up the infrastructure and the opportunities, such as an institute like this. Right. We'll have the training of the incoming governors and the, nom right. you know, the governor's nominee. Or we'll have all of the Rotary Foundation chairs for each of the Rotary districts come to that. Well, sure. some of that is driven in part by work of the committees at Rotary International, then filters down through the system. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, as far as staffing, because I know um, yeah. the trustees have specifics but you have administrative efforts also with that mm -hmm. what is your staff um do you have a guesstimate on number that you have at in evanston or 653 actually? 653 mm -hmm. are they specific to the foundation no okay no probably i would believe about 170 are okay. approximately uh, today okay and and of the other numbers many of them dealing with international offices and, and so forth that yeah. is true right now how many uh, do you have any idea how many international offices you have that you work through because most of those are all foundation well, based. Well, I think we have eight uh, international offices around the world, okay. and uh, and so uh, each has, uh, uh, they're an extension of, of the world headquarters in Evanston, right. Illinois, and right. so they uh, they have staff and they come together periodically to uh, to get uh, coordinates and all that sort of stuff. But So I'm going to guess it's the, um, if there's a, a project or something like that going out there, you want to do an evaluation as, as a trustee or the, the board, to see those, do you, how would the efforts be? In other words, if there's a project specific, example in Mexico, a water yeah, project, yeah. that seemed to be fascinating, that would work, how would you find out about it or, or get to hear about those? Well, there's a, number one, there's a formal grant application process, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a fairly involved process for sure with some very specific uh, uh, criterion laid out for that, and uh, a local rotary team, if you will, the Rotarians, uh, work on uh, online application and submit it. And let's say a grant of $100,000 is, is uh, awarded. And, um, and before it's awarded at, at a grant level, particularly at that level uh, or higher, uh, we will have a, a, what we call a cadre member, somebody that has expert, a Rotarian with expertise in a particular area. They may actually go out and, and to the location and meet with the Rotary Club or clubs that are initiating the grant or, or participants in the grant to be sure that the community is properly engaged the way that it, and it'll vary from project to project sure. and so forth. 
And, uh, and so we, we actually have an on-site process that goes on uh, prior to the approval of a grant. When a grant is approved and then it is funded and, and it's carried out at the other end of the process, uh, we may very well have a cadre member go back out and, and look at it and certify that uh, indeed the uh, mission was accomplished. And sustainability is an important part of the, uh, right. the process, uh, meaning that uh, long after the Rotarians have left that particular project, that it will continue to be uh, active and it will have engaged local community or uh, schools, if it's related to a school or whatever, long after we're gone, it'll be self-sustaining, if you right, will. Right, right. No, yeah. that's good. Uh, we actually had a couple of programs yeah. on the cadre. Yeah. Yeah, outstanding program, by the way. Those guys, uh, they do a lot. Yes, they do. They indeed. do quite a bit. Yeah. Now, tell me this. Uh, oftentimes, Rotarians, the ones that haven't been involved with, um, I would say, the fundraising component of that, in your words, tell us why the foundation becomes important as a tool for Rotary. Well, it's uh, maybe the analogy, one analogy would be it's, it's the gas that, that drives the, the, the automobile of, <laughs> of carrying out whatever it is that we're doing in Rotary, particularly in terms of service and outreach and, and, and so forth. And uh, without the, uh, the resources, uh, uh, we would be immensely limited in what we're able to do, quite obviously, and, and actually the, the, the funds that are raised uh, by Rotarians, uh, both in the area where the uh, a project may emanate from and will be delivered as well as the, the, the Rotarians and other places in the world who are going to participate and support the program. Right. It gives them a much greater sense of ownership in what it is that's being done and, and so it, it creates a absolutely irreplaceable sense of uh, this is this is a project that I can connect with and, and it would be just like I experienced their Rotary moments many yeah, times yeah. over. Well, that, that's excellent. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, it, it looks to me like uh, we're going to be in good hands for the next four years under your leadership. And we really appreciate that experience you brought is, is immense, and especially with the passion. I'm sure you find a lot of the trustees also carry that same passion for service. Um, and uh, lastly, I want to also extend my uh, hello to your wife. Diane. Oh, yeah. Sorry she couldn't make it today, okay. but uh, and, also and Rotarian, outstanding Rotarian also. And to Roxanne as well. As oh, well thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, please. And thank you very much for you joining bet. us. Thank you bet. Thank you, appreciate Wade. that. Okay. Thank you. You bet. And with that, everybody, thank you very much. Take a look at the Rotary Foundation. See all the great that it does. And uh, with gentlemen like Paul Metzl, changing lives, changing world, that is one area where we could be very proud of. With that, thank you. We'll see you next time. Okay, great. Good.